Hello everyone it's Rosie, and welcome to my channel where I explain and simplify your homeowners association CCNRs, covenant or bylaws, so that it's easier to understand and remember. Understanding your homeowners bylaws is very important so that you don't make costly mistakes and it will save you a ton of headaches later. Today we are going to talk about architectural control rules and the role of the committee that enforces them, as detailed in the standard bylaws. Architectural control rules are usually included in the original bylaws that all homes in a private subdivision are subjected to, whether the property is a member of the association or not. The architectural control articles are guidelines in maintenance or alteration of the structure or appearance of the property within a condominium building or a subdivision. Sometimes the committee or the group of people who enforces these rules are separate from the association's board of directors and are elected separately. However, here in Georgia, most of the association's board members also double as this committee, or they can appoint a group of volunteers to enforce these rules. The purpose of architectural control is to preserve the integrity of the condominium building or the neighborhood's character and maintain the cohesiveness of the home designs within it. Therefore, in the bylaws, it is detailed that any installation, construction or alterations to the lot shall need the ACC's approval. However, in my opinion these sets of rules are the most abused by some associations and the cause of most resentment towards the HOA. Let's discuss the most important stipulations and you can judge for yourself if these rules are equitable. Section 3 of the ACC article reads, The Architectural Control Committee shall have the right to approve or disapprove any plans and specifications submitted to aid its sole and untrammeled discretion, which approval or disapproval may be based upon any grounds, including purely aesthetic considerations which shall be deemed sufficient. Pause this video for a second and read this stipulation again, as many times as you need until you fully grasp what it says. This stipulation orders that the ACC committee shall have the only and unrestricted discretion to approve or disapprove any of your plans to install, renovate, upgrade or change any part of the exterior of your house based upon any grounds. There are no guidelines, exceptions or restrictions on how this group of people who enforces these rules can reach a decision on which a homeowner's application may be approved or not. In some communities where the houses look exactly alike, the enforcement of these rules is so strict to the point that the committee could sometimes even prohibit residents from hanging wreaths or placing doormats, flags, or any form of personalization to their property that will show some distinction from the rest of the other unit. Imagine coming home a little tipsy at night and you can't identify which house is yours, especially if you just moved in no one knows you from the neighborhood. The implementation of this rule in subdivisions where no homes are exactly alike could get even worse. In our community, the designs of homes are diverse. If you saw the third episode of this series, I mentioned that our association is requiring homeowners to ask their approval before we could plant anything in our front yard. We are asked to get approval to replace our roof and windows even using the same exact material and style or repainting our house with the same color as it was before, which are all listed under the maintenance clause of the same set of bylaws. One neighbor told me that the reason our association is requiring written approval for these works is that some of the paint colors and building materials are no longer allowed. Imagine living in the same yellow house with black shutters for 20 years and all of a sudden your ACC decided that if you want to repaint your house, it has to be a shade of blue and your shutters should be painted white. What if the reason you bought your house is because of its charming yellow paint? This ACC rule allows for the people who are in this committee to apply their own personal style and preference to your property. And every so often, this committee regroup as some members move out, quits, or gets replaced. Then another set of people will have their own personal methodology of how they want the houses in your subdivision to look like, and what was allowed before are no longer, and vice versa. Years ago there was a homeowner in my neighborhood who wants to replace her front door with a decorative Roth iron door. But she was denied, and the ACC's reason was that none of the other homes in our neighborhood has this type of door. Remember, none of the homes in my neighborhood look alike. Then in recent months, I realized that some homes that have been allowed to renovate the front of their house have installed this type of decorative door. Another stipulation under the ACC article is the right to inspect. It reads, The Architectural Control Committee, its agents and representatives, shall have the right during reasonable hours to enter upon, 
and inspect any lot and structure thereon for the purpose of ascertaining whether the installation, construction, alteration, or maintenance of any structure or the use of any lot or structure is in compliance with the provisions of this declaration. And the Architectural Control Committee shall not be deemed to have committed a trespass or wrongful act solely by reason of such entry or inspection. Again, take a moment, pause this video, and read this stipulation until you fully grasp what it says. This rule in the covenant effectively allows people, perfect strangers, to enter our property, inspect it within reasonable hours, and we as homeowners, cannot file any charges for a wrongful act if they break into our house because they suspect that we are not maintaining its structure or they suspect that we are renting our basement. Did you notice that this stipulation does not say that the homeowner has to be present during this inspection? Aren't reasonable hours mean during the daytime, when most homeowners are at work? Know that this stipulation is mentioned at least three times in the bylaws. Not only do I see this stipulation intrusive, but there is another condition in the bylaws that allow the ACC to collect payment from the homeowner to cover the cost of the inspection. And since it doesn't say that this fee is only justifiable if and when they see a violation committed, they can insist to collect this fee even if they didn't find anything. The provision of the right to inspect in the bylaws gives more privacy to home renters than to you as a homeowner. Landlords are required to give renters at least 24 hours notice before they could come inside the property they are renting when it is occupied. The ACC's right to inspect effectively gives permission to the association to come into your house, unannounced. I recently read a story of a man who inherited his grandparents' property that belongs to an association. This association requires that every homeowner's garage be inspected bi-weekly to make sure they are not using it as a storage. When he refused, they went to as far as breaking the lock on his garage door so they can get in. What caught my attention to this article is when the writer described his tenacious HOA helm by a group of power-hungry, greedy busybodies who made it their mission in life to get the entire neighborhood under their control. It downright fits the description of the HOA board members and the managing company that runs our subdivision. I thought that this person lives in my neighborhood, and they are talking about the association where my house belongs. If you would like to read his whole story and how he was able to get his sweet revenge, the link is on the description box below. Section 6 of the ACC article also gives the committee representatives and their agents the right to enter your premises and remove any and all structure or construction you may have put in on the basis of nothing but their own opinion that you have committed a violation. You have 15 days after they send you a letter via certified mail detailing the nature of your infraction and to stop and remove any and all improvements you may have done to your home. On top of this, you are also liable to pay any cost that the ACC or its representatives may have incurred during their inspection. Another story I read was from California where the association was demanding that all homeowners keep their garage doors open between the hours of 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. or face an immediate hearing notice and a $200 fine. I have not heard of my association doing the same as any of these stories, but as I have shown you the stipulations in our bylaws allow them to. I just hope they don't get any idea. The truth is the only recourse a homeowner has is to file a lawsuit and convince a judge that the association's action presented a clear and present danger to the property owner, as it does, to overturn it and allow for the homeowner to press charges of trespassing. Otherwise, any and all of the conditions in an HOA covenant can be fully enforced and they legally stand. Now can you blame me for being so passionate about association reform and asking you repeatedly to write to your representatives in Congress and the Senate to reform homeowners association in our country? If these stipulations and true stories of what your association could possibly and legally do to your property doesn't move you, I don't know what will. If you are thinking that since your association has never done this to your neighborhood, that they never will. With this stipulation nothing stops them from doing so in the future or if another set of people are elected. You have no guarantee that they will not exercise this entitlement given to them by the covenant that you may or may not knowingly agree to. Have you ever heard of selective enforcement? Selective enforcement is when the association only applies certain rules to a homeowner or a small group of homeowners but not the entire community. In the standard bylaws, part of the definition of structure means anything or object with the placement of which may affect the appearance of the lot including but not limited to any building or part of a building, garage, porch, gazebo, shed, greenhouse or bathhouse, coop or cage, 
covered or uncovered patio, swimming pool, tennis court, fence, curbing, paving, wall, tree, shrub, sign, signboard, mailbox, driveway, temporary or permanent living quarters including any house trailer. And in Section 2 of the ACC article partly reads, No structure shall be commenced, erected placed, moved on to or permitted to remain on any lot unless submitted to and approved in writing by the ACC. I'm not trying to be political, but in my neighborhood, some homeowners pitch signage of their political candidates on their lawns, some for birthday parties, congratulatory messages, even gender reveal notifications, and I've seen these signages come and go since I moved into the neighborhood. But when some homeowners decided to put signages in support of global action of awareness, the notification to remove these signages came swift and stern. This is a form of selective enforcement. In the last episode, I mentioned that our community management would sometimes not respond to requests from homeowners when they need to replace or work on some home projects that needed a written permission. But because some homeowners don't read the bylaws, they don't know that the ACC has a 45-day window to approve any plans and specifications submitted to them. Some abandon their projects because of the lack of communication from the managing company. Section 4 of the ACC article stipulates the ACC's obligation to act. It reads, The ACC shall take action on any plans and specifications submitted as herein provided within 45 days after receipt thereof. Approval by the ACC if granted, together with any conditions imposed by the ACC shall be placed in writing on the plans and specifications and shall be returned to the applicant. Failure by the ACC to take action within 45 days of the receipt of plans and specifications submitted for approval shall be deemed approval of such plans and specifications. One of the homeowners in my neighborhood used this clause to fight our association and won. She submitted a plan to erect a fence on the side of her property, and it took the managing company 52 days to respond with a question to which the answer was already in her application. After she realized that her fence is now technically considered approved, she erected the fence where she originally planned. When the association realized what she had done, they wanted her to move the fence where it will cut her backyard in half. When she refused, they started to fine her $25 per day until it reached more than $10,000. She was left with no choice but to file a lawsuit against the association and the managing company. In the settlement meeting, the association had to let her keep her fence where it is, and they had to pay her full legal fees that amounted to more than $12,000, so that the case will not move on to the trial phase. This is another instance where our board of directors used the association fund to pay for unnecessary expense that could have been prevented had they read the bylaws. I am sure their legal counsel had told them about this clause but they may have thought that backing down from a homeowner will make them seem weak and ineffective. There are a lot more to this story that I will tell you in great detail later on. Now let's move on to maintenance. Article 3 of the Standard Bylaws details that homeowners are responsible for maintaining the exterior of their properties. This includes, but not limited to painting, repairing, replacing and care for roofs, gutters, downspouts, building surfaces, lighting, trees, shrubs, grass, sidewalks and other exterior improvements, including drainage. If the homeowner fails to do so, the ACC has the legal right to take care of it and place a lien on your house to collect the payment. Just remember, there is a designated time of 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on any day except Sunday that the ACC could come and perform this forced maintenance. Our ACC once called a landscaping company to cut one of my neighbor's lawn after this period. This neighbor had to call and remind them of this rule so the grass cutters were called to stop. If you will put this article side by side with Section 4 of the General Covenants and Restrictions, and Section 2 of the ACC article, you will see that they contradict each other. Since the bylaws direct the homeowners to be responsible for maintaining the integrity of their property and ensure its neat, attractive and safe condition, why then are the homeowners required a written approval from the ACC before any construction could take place without citing any exceptions? This is the stipulation that our ACC goes by that forces homeowners to wait for a written approval from our managing company that could sometimes take forever before they could replace elements of their home's exterior, even when they are using the same materials or colors. We are all out of time now so we're going to discuss the election process and your right to obtain your association's financial records in our next episode. Once again, if you have anything to add, correct, or want to share your own HOA story, 
Please feel free to leave a comment below and don't forget to click like, share and subscribe, so you will be notified when another video is up. Until next time, stay safe and be well.